Go ahead. Hello. Good morning, Agnes. <coughs> How are you? How are you? Good morning, everyone. Hi, good morning. Great family. Good morning. Good morning, Bob. I see you there. Good morning, Ken. Hi, Caroline. Phone book update Morning. Got so quiet so quickly. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. So good morning, everyone. Reverend John, Reverend Anastasi, we are not six feet apart, so we are masked up, and um, we are retreating. I don't know where are we anyway. Virginia. Uh, somewhere in Virginia. <laughs> in the Shenandoahs. Trying to Lovely. figure out uh, how we're going to create massive success at UUCA <laughs> this year. And this morning, our service will be led by Robert Ertman, our worship lay leader. He'll be giving the sermon, but also the rest of us, uh, including Joshua Long, membership manager. Uh, Melanie, Rob, and uh, Julie Berman. So thank you for being with us this morning. Here are some Zoom tips. And uh, make sure you, uh, well, we, we've already muted you, but uh, be cognizant of what's happening in your environment while we have worship. We welcome newcomers. Bob's going to welcome folk. Okay. Hey, Bob. Hi. Welcome, whoever you are, wherever you came from, you are welcome here. Whomever you love, you are welcome here. Whether you believe in God some of the time, all the time, or none of the time, you are welcome here. Newcomers are especially welcome and if you look down in chat, you'll see instructions for signing up for our newsletter and uh, filling out some information for us about yourselves so we can stay in touch with you. Welcome. Good morning, UUCA. My name is Julie and all of the families in our faith community and myself would warmly like to welcome Reverend Anastasia to this congregation. Here's a little video of some of our families saying hello.
Welcome to UECA, Reverend Anastasia and family. And welcome to UECA. <laughs> Thank you so much, dear ones. That was so beautiful, really, that um, I don't even have words. <laughs> No, but thank you. And I just really look forward to meeting you in person. There's just um, nothing quite like playing together that builds love and community and um, the memories that make everything meaningful and guiding in life. So thank you so much for that. All right. I'm going to pull the PowerPoint back up. I think you got a little teary eyed there. Oh, you know I do. <laughs> stop share so we can see. So my dear ones, I wanted to take a moment to talk with you as your newly arrived co-executive minister about what the work is ahead of us. And boy do I know that we wish this looked a little different. That I was in person and getting an opportunity to greet you and give high fives and some hugs and for you to pull me aside in those personal moments. Reverend John and I were just talking about um, how when we do get to do that together, it will feel like a new beginning again. So how wonderful that we get to greet and greet and greet each other because truly that is the work of being human in this world <laughs> to continually be open and greeting the person in front of you. But we also are in a particular time. And it is uh, what some people like to call a liminal time, a time between times. Um, we have so much clarity about the world that we have been, had been living in and are emerging out of. A world of great inequality and injustice wrecked by multiple pandemics, a healthcare system that does not care for all, housing that is insufficient, systems of racial oppression that deny the worth and dignity and lives and livelihoods of too many. And I could go on. But we're coming out of that time of oppression. We see it and we wanna exit it. And now we're in this other time and it's a kind of wilderness time. And it really reminds me of the wilderness time in the biblical story. Some of you will recognize this picture. And they exited out of slavery in Egypt and they had to figure out how to be community with one another, how to provide for themselves and for one another and to figure out what it means to be a people. And Moses came down with a covenant and then uh, as often happens, um, leaders come with a plan and a covenant, and then the people say, this is great, what does it actually mean? And the leaders retreated again to figure out what the next steps were and what that actually meant. And the people were left confused and um, trying to figure out, and they said, you know, we remember some of our old practices, and we remember um, what some people did, and they erected a golden calf that they worshiped. And uh, Moses came down again and said, what, we're back to wealth, like worshiping wealth and power um, and putting those literally on a pedestal? And so they took down that golden calf and instead in their place, they put the values, practices that would guide their community that reminded them to be faithful to their own liberation and its promise to take rest and to not ravage their bodies and to live for one another, to be honest and mutual, to not covet what their neighbors had. And it was only after they really understood how to be together and how to put those principles forward and to embed them, not in a monument only, not in a stone only, but also in their hearts. They literally knew it that they left that wilderness time. You know, there is so much that devastates us these days, but there's nothing I want more 
than for this time of pandemic to result in a society that's more just, mutual, equitable, where really we are a community in which no one is forgotten and which each voice and person and breath matters. I hope that over the next year, we start to live that way with one another and we help the people around us live that way too. So that is my prayer. And I think that is our big work with one another, how to essentially create new systems and prioritize our values. So I invite you as we go into this service um, where we talk about how some of this work is happening and the monuments around us, um, let us think about what we will prioritize as we move towards liberation and mutual community. Thank you, dear ones. So for our chalice lighting today, I want to begin with us breathing in and out. Let us recognize that what we call our land, our congregational land, truly does not belong to us. Let us recognize that it is the traditional land of the Piscataway people. Let us come here today recognizing that our knowledge is incomplete. Let us arrive with humility, knowing that without understanding history from the First Nations perspective, we cannot have all the wisdom that we need for our beloved community. We therefore light our chalice with humility, curiosity, and openness. Today in this worship service, we are going to take you through an arc, an arc that for some will be a beginning of a journey and some for others will be a review of a journey. And this is a journey of recognizing that within Unitarian Universalism, there have been little monuments, traditions, actions that have, um, that have been harmful ones that we are shifting our relationship to. And um, one of these for me has been the hymn, um, 121 Will Build a Land. Uh, I remember the first times I sang it 16 years ago and the beauty of the melody and the inspiring kind of crescendo of the music and how it talked about a people of purpose who were, uh, being a people of purpose who will build a compassionate and just land where people are becoming freed. And about three years later, after I had sung that hymn um, several times a year, I learned that uh, this, is a, this is a song that really harmed our Native American siblings. Because when we, I sang, we'll build a land, they heard uh, that the colonizer was coming. And so for me, I can, still remember why this song was beautiful, but I hold as more greater truth that there are things that we shouldn't, that we should let go of because they're not um, ones that are mutually um, safe. And so I want us to start here to recognize um, for some of us, we're still shifting away from such um, some uh, artifacts of our history. And for others, a reminder we really have come so far. So let us hear the sim um, and sing it together. Oh, we'll 
My dear ones, I am so excited that we are inducting some new members into our covenantal community this morning. And I have a little promise and uh, to these new members, a promise that's important for all of us to hear and to renew in our hearts, which is that when we bring in new people, we pledge that we are creating community anew. And we pledge that because we want to make sure that they know and we know that every person here has an opportunity to shape our faith and to create this new Unitarian Universalism that we are trying to do here as part of that larger work, kind of making sure that we have a more equitable and just and compassionate and mutual community coming out of this pandemic. And that involves changes to Unitarian Universalism. And nothing gives me greater hope than to bring in new members into that work as well as into relationship. So to join a Unitarian Universalist church is to enter into covenantal relationship with the church and with our liberal religious tradition. It's members and your own spiritual journey. Our faith tradition has always identified the core of our belief, that the core of our belief is the sacred quality of relationships, truly our interdependence. Our tasks, of, the tasks of our religious community, one of them is to name the bonds that bind us together, one to another and to the larger community that we serve. Good morning. Each of our new members has completed the required sessions of the Inquirer series, our pathway course to membership, and they have made a formal pledge to support the Unitarian Universalist Church of Annapolis with their time, talents, and resources. They have also agreed to do the work of growing their souls and deepening their relationships with others. So I want to present our new members here with us. And I'm just going to uh, say their, I'll say their name, and I'm going to give just a short descriptor of each of them um, that they want you to know about them. So first we have Margaret Chen, and Margaret Chen lives in Annapolis, and uh, one thing about her, she is the um, head of the Annapolis chapter of the Citizens Climate Lobby, which met at our church, and met our church before COVID. Um, now they meet virtually and she plays the violin. We have uh, Kyle Coran. Kyle Coran and her husband, Sean, have been married for 24 years and they have two children, Evelyn and Amelia. Kyle is a former teacher. She's a current stay-at-home parent and a future school librarian. And her and her husband are both from Georgia, but have been Maryland residents for 17 years and they currently reside in Crownsville and they have a dog named Maribel. Uh, Taffy and Damian Davies um, have been coming to the church since last year and they live in Severna Park and in that picture you can see their son Grayson. I, I don't know if they're here with us. I think they're, they believe this is their vacation week but um, they send their love and they're really happy to be joining the church. Maria Day um, has been a UU since 1990. She was a member of Paint Branch UU. Um, she is a historian and an artist and she lives now in Annapolis. And she has been a member of the, of our, you say, Full Circle Women's group on and off since 2003. And she's really excited about joining. And then we have Latika Hicks. Uh, she's been coming um, for quite a few years now and she lives in Crofton with her husband and two sons, and she has a heart for justice. Then we have Joy Howard, and we can see the picture of Joy Howard with her family, Ryan, her two kids. Uh, we are, they are excited to have found you, say, and looking forward to getting to know everybody and doing this hard work of creating beloved community together. We have Lynn Locke and Stacy Sickles Locke. Um, they've been coming for a few years and um, they are both really excited about joining. One thing I heard from Stacy is that um, 
she's been able, feels been able to connect even more over these Zoom services. So um, it's been meaningful to actually do these services over Zoom despite the pandemic. And then lastly, um, Ann Sawyer. And um, Ann Sawyer is a lifelong UU. She's been a member of several different congregations all over the country. And she is now enjoying her retirement and all her new adventures, including joining this congregation. So I hope that um, some of y'all can stay around and welcome them. We are gonna do a new members gathering after the service on Zoom in a, in a breakout room, which um, if anybody wants to join, they can. So we're gonna move to the next part of our ceremony with um, Reverend Anastasia. Let us remember again that the principles that we are lifting up as our guiding values. Ours is not a covenantal faith, a, not a creedal faith, but a covenantal faith. To be a member of UUCA is to be guided by the seven Unitarian Universalist principles plus one, the eighth principle. We ask that everyone follow along as we recite the principles. The inherent worth and dignity of every person, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. Next slide. Acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations in a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. The right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. The goal of world community with, of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Respect for the inherent, the interdependent web of existence of which we are part, journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse multicultural beloved community by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. And now to the members of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Annapolis, do you accept our welcome and covenant to join us with, join with us on this journey of faith guided by our Eighth principles, this is to the new members, apologies. To our new members, do you accept our welcome and covenant to join us, to join with us on this journey of faith, guided by our eight principles? So please unmute yourselves if you can, and your response is, we do. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> we are blessed to have you here. We are thrilled to share our faith with you. And Melanie, just for a very brief moment, can we um, unmute the congregation, have a spirited welcome of um, welcome from everybody to our new members. Yay! Hey, welcome. 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 welcome, 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 let us join together in singing the beloved hymn number 206 amazing grace
So um, John and I have been singing along to Amazing Grace, enjoying the music. And um, Josh, if you would be willing to lead and available, then that would just be simply amazing. And we'll go back to the lovely slideshow so you guys could sing along with Josh um, to this song. Here it is. Hold on. What? What? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And raised my feet, really. That's my cue for this sermon. William Faulkner told us in his beautiful but brutal novel, Requiem for a Nun, that the past is never dead. It's not even past. Answering a question after a National Press Club lecture, James Baldwin told us just as bluntly, that history is not the past, it is the present. We carry our history with us. We are our history. It's always been with us, but this last year, more and more of us have been willing to confront the original sins of our nation. Genocide of Native Americans and chattel slavery. It's time for us to bear witness. Some of you know that I'm a Zen teacher in the Soto Zen lineage of Taizan Mazumi Roshi, and also in the Zen Peacemaker Order, founded by Bernie Glassman. This is my teaching stick. My practice with the Zen peacemakers guides my life. I practice, try to practice, the three tenets of the Zen peacemakers. Practicing means living them, not pondering them, but making them a part.
part of life. The first tenet is not knowing. Bernie Glassman explains that not knowing is entering a situation without being attached to any opinion, idea, or concept. This means total openness to the situation, deep listening to the situation. Not knowing is a difficult practice. We know stuff, we just do. But we try to give up our fixed ideas. Not knowing is a powerful practice too. When we try to give up fixed ideas, it's easier to recognize and to let go of the lies that we have told ourselves. Garrison Keillor, who used to be beloved of Unitarian Universalists, uh, said that what I have against Unitarians is their relentless proselytizing among the dead. Well, we wanted Thomas Jefferson. And now that we've got him, uh, we need to disavow him. Thomas Jefferson wasn't just a slaveholder, but he knew, he knew. He said, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just. None of this can be passed off as just a product of the times. People didn't know. People knew. We just sang Amazing Grace, one of my favorite hymns, one of my favorite religious things, right up with uh, the 23rd Psalm. These don't reflect my theology. Really, really, if you know me at all, you, you know that they don't. But it's a beautiful song, and I love it. The author was a slave trader, captain of a slave ship, later a financier of slave trading, and later an Anglican minister. He wrote, he wrote this, but really, this was not, not so much an epiphany. He knew, he knew, he lied to himself, made his wealth by slave trading. People in the past knew, and we know now, many of the things that are wrong. We need to give up some fixed ideas about what can be done about them and how to go about it. But none of us are in doubt that the genocide of Native Americans was wrong. The massacre of women and children at Wounded Knee was wrong. Slavery was wrong. The continued oppression of Blacks is wrong. Now what do we do about it? Well, the second tenet of the Zen peacemakers is bearing witness. We bear witness to the joy and suffering we encounter. Bernie says that rather than observing the situation, we become situation. We become intimate with whatever it is, disease, war, poverty, death. When you bear witness, you're simply there. You don't flee. Bearing witness is also a difficult practice. My own approach is do not look away. And there is much that is hard to look at, hard to become. The third tenet of the Zen peacemakers 
is loving action, the right action, the actions which arise naturally when we practice not knowing and bearing witness. When we enter a situation without any fixed ideas and then become situation. Why do we do this? Well, other Buddhists can abide in the blissful realm of not knowing and non-attachment. We are determined to live in the world of attachment because as Bernie tells us, that is also the world of empathy, passion, and compassion. We are practicing engaged Buddhism, engaged with the interdependent web of being of which we are all a part. In Zen, we speak of the underlying oneness of the universe, but I prefer the UU statement. The world of attachment is where we carry our history, where we are our history and the only place where we can find the loving actions, the healing actions for our nation's original sins. We can and we should celebrate the ending of Redskins as a team name and mascot. I'm sure that the team owners didn't just finally listen to the pain in Native American voices. This was a long time coming, and the result of many who did listen and protest. The Atlanta Braves haven't dropped their team name, but they did drop ban the Tomahawk Chop for the final playoff game last fall. And I have to note in passing, because you just can't make this stuff up, Conservative Georgia Republicans blame the absence of foam rubber tomahawks for the loss of the playoff game and the series. The Cleveland Indians haven't changed their name, but might. Two years ago, they abandoned their Chief Wahoo logo. These changes in culture are significant, meaningful but they are not enough. For five years, I've traveled. This past summer, we had to Zoom. To South Dakota and Wyoming to bear witness with the Lakota. I tried to listen carefully and deeply. If we hope that healing actions will emerge when we give up our fixed ideas, and don't look away. We need to listen to the voices of the hurt. I heard pain around these demeaning symbols. Pain that their children experienced this disrespect. But I heard more pain around systemic poverty. So many ill-housed, ill-clothed ill-fed. I heard more pain about broken promises and the loss of land, about continuing cultural genocide and the absence of support for teaching traditional ways and languages. There is much to be done. And I heard some grumbling support for the replacement of Columbus Day by Native American Day, a belated and inadequate response to the displacement of Native Americans as our manifest destiny unfolded. What I didn't hear were calls to topple statues of Christopher Columbus. His accomplishments as a navigator and seaman are impressive but the atrocities he personally ordered and the atrocities that he against Native American women that he countenanced 
none of which I'd learned about in school, make him unworthy of statues and other honors. I hope that momentum will grow and we can really say goodbye, Columbus. There are other statues that need to go. Black Lives Matter. Statues of Robert E. Lee and other Confederate leaders tell every Black person that their lives don't matter. This country was a better place when they were enslaved. Black children sent to schools like Robert E. Lee Middle School are assaulted every day by an assertion that they don't matter. Statues, schools, streets, parks carry hurtful messages that need to end. Military bases named for Confederate generals like Fort Bliss tell black soldiers that they are unworthy. Myself, I would like to see the equestrian statue of Andrew Jackson removed from Lafayette Square. Lafayette was a true American hero. Jackson is an American military hero, but he was also a racist and responsible for the Indian Removal Act and the Trail of Tears. Removal by consensus and at least by democratic process would be healing. Toppling might not be so healing. I urge you to take up this practice of giving up fixed ideas and not looking away from what we've done and what we continue to do. The real heart of these three tenets brings us to an understanding of what we need to do, what I need to do. I can't practice not knowing and come to a conclusion of what you need to do. You need to do it yourself. Deep listening is the most important part of it. And of course, Zen does not own deep listening. Zen teachers didn't invent deep listening. We try to do it. We try to do it with coming to the table, other groups that we form and where we practice. I urge you, do not look away from our past. And now I invite you to meditate. Think of the voices you have heard. Think of the pain that you personally have heard. The pain our nation has caused. Let it roll over you. Let it roll over you like healing waters. Just acknowledging the hurt is important. It's not the only thing we can do, but it's the first thing we can do. And it takes us to the place where we understand 
things that we must do. Just sit in silence for a moment. Listen, listen to the pain. Bob, thank you for that very meaningful message this morning. This month, we are sharing the plate with Arundel House of Hope. Part of what you give goes to them, uh, and part goes to UUCA. There are several ways to give. You can certainly give uh, by using this QR, QR code. And there's a line for share the plate at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Julie uh, will share with you the links in the chat. And uh, you can also give, if, if you're a friend joining us, thank you for being here. If you'd like to make a contribution, there's a line for you to make, some, make one. And for members, for your pledges and current, your commitments, there is a line for you. Please be generous. We have a lot of work to do and we cannot do that without your financial support. Please enjoy this song by the UCA Choir, performed by Robert A. and the UCA Choir and Anastasia. I just wanted to take a moment to introduce it. Um, more recently in these last couple of years, um, and particularly uh, more recently these past couple of years, I've realized almost everywhere I've gone on this earth, there have been monuments, vestiges of colonization and slavery. I uh, studied abroad in Bristol, England, which um, made the US news when they toppled another statue um, one night of another slave trader. And um, one day, not that long ago, this statue of Jen Reed went up instead. It's a statue of a current um, contemporary British Black Lives Matter leader. Um, and uh, her image is so powerful. And I thought, imagine if every day when I studied and was forming my mind and trying to figure out uh, the adult I wanted to be if I passed her instead of that white man. Um, this statue was actually taken down 24 hours later by the British um, city government uh, the Bristol city government. Um, it didn't go up by their process. And, um, but I, I just want to say it's, it's easy to topple. But what we do need to do is um, develop, install, put in the monuments, um, build the buildings, build the public squares, build the schools, build the things that reflect our values of liberation and mutuality, resilience, courage, compassion. Um, the song that our wonderful Rob Radai wrote and is about to be performed for you by the UUCA Choir is about that desire in our hearts to build such monuments, to build such societies. With that, may you enjoy it.
our wars to as we extinguish our flames this morning is by the English historian at Barnard College, James Basker. And he wrote, there's this thing that human beings share, which is pain and the imaginative yearning. And this is the thing about human beings. We were able to imagine and to yearn for joy and peace, for relief from the miseries of the world. As we go from this place, we acknowledge the pain of the past that we carry into us so alive this moment. And we encourage each other to engage in that imaginative yearning for a truly beloved community. May we make it so together. Amen. As you can see on your screen, we have uh, some announcements. Uh, join us next Sunday for worship. That will be led by our Building Beloved Community Group, talking about a number of things, including voter suppression. Uh, invite your friends. Uh, actually, you know, we are able to now welcome so many people to our community in a very um, subtle way, just sending them a link, inviting them to come see what we experience. I don't know if we'll ever get another time in history to do this. So this is a unique period where we can all be share our good news and our values with others, invite them to a session, invite them to the service next week. Uh, and related, you, you to vote. Uh, this is a critical time in history, as we know, and I know that you are all getting the word out. I continue to promote, we continue to promote the book, Settle Acts of Exclusion whether you listen to it on audio or you get a Kindle or you get a hard copy, uh, let's work on understanding what it means, uh, the subtleties. Uh, the subtleties are really what matter. They build up and they have a toll. They take a toll on people. And we want to do less harm. So let's uh, work on that together. There will be a congregation conversation. Yeah, and I'm really excited to tell you about that. Um, I... I talked earlier about how we really need to build a vision for how we're going to prioritize the right values for our beloved community and make sure that in this time when there is a lot that overwhelms us that we're prioritizing the right and important things. So come uh, in two Sundays, stay after the service. You don't have to do anything, just come for worship and hang out um, and come prepared to participate. We're going to start some playing together because the congregation that Plays together, stays together, and we want to stay together during this time. And as a warm up, um, this coming Friday on August 14th from 4 30 to 6 p.m., uh, there's a virtual happy hour with me, and we're going to do a lot of that playing together. So um, just come, and uh, if you're overwhelmed, don't worry, our joy will be infectious. And if you're bored, don't worry, come with your ideas, but um, we're just going to be together and enjoy um, some informal time. Just as another quick note, um, thank you for your support. We have been getting uh, people buying books with our online bookstore. Uh, we're closing the books to make room for the expansion uh, in the North Axe. So we really want to get rid of as much of uh, material, material, much of, of inventory as we can. So please go to that link on your screen. Maybe we can copy and paste it and put it in the chat. And I thank you for your generosity. Julie, you want to jump in on this one? Yeah, faith formation community. If you're a parent, a caregiver, a volunteer, a leader, or facilitator in our faith formation programs, please consider joining Slack. It's a um, place where we can chat without needing to depend on email or Facebook. You can create your own profile and join the channels that are relevant to you. Um, we have them divided up by age groups, so zero to five, elementary, middle school, and high school. In this time of physical distance, it might be a wonderful way to connect with other people um, that are experiencing some of the same things as you are. So baseball, uh, the baseball leagues may have been disrupted, but your love for them has not, I am sure, if you're someone who loves baseball. And so 
um, you're invited into an intergenerational I Love Baseball small group um, that is meeting this Tuesday at 11. And um, the email is on this slide, uh, but also you can find information about it in the, in the know and on our communication networks. And uh, we want you to stay. We will have coffee hour. So if you want to leave, fill your coffee up and come back, we will have that. And Joshua, do you have something for new members? Yes, we do. We have the new members gathering. So if you are going to be attending that, just make sure you raise your hand, your virtual Zoom hand um, in the participants tab. And um, there uh, are new members, please do that. And those who, if you want to come say hi to new members and be a part of that, you are more than welcome. So please raise your hand so we can put you in to that breakout room and everybody else will be put into uh, our coffee breakout rooms. And know as we break into our special uh, separate groups um, and go about our day, uh, our love for you goes with us, goes with you. So let us stop share and greet your neighbors. <coughs> <coughs> Greetings, neighbors. Hello. 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 Hi, everybody. Bob. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Bob. Hello, everybody. Great to Bob. Thank you, Bob. Have a great day. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Bob. Bye. Hello. Good to see everybody. Hey, Gemma. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye Hi, Heather. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi, Karen. Good morning. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Hi, Caroline. 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 Hi,
Josh, did you see my raised hand? Debbie wants to be part of the new members meet. Yeah, me, me too. Coffee yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, very nice. Carol, that's hilarious. I'll heat it up. Are, are we greeting the new people at this? Uh, yes, Heather, and you're welcome to go over and say hi. That'll be yeah. great. Sorry. I'll warm it. Yes, if you're in a leadership position, uh, it would be great for you to go over and, and, and introduce yourself to the new members. Yeah. Yeah. Are you inviting us over to that soon? I haven't seen any invitation yet. Yeah, Julie's working on that. Um, she's getting all those that raise their hands um, an invitation to that newcomer room. And then um, we got you, Kylex, Stacy, we, 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 all those folks that raise their hands, she's working We're on that. We have a meeting August 14th. Deb Boudre wants to go. Not her. Okay. I don't seem to have a hand to raise. We're going to have a baseball game. You go to participants. It's under the participants list, Deb. Ah, uh, yeah. Go to participants, and at the bottom of the list, there's a little link there that allows you to raise your hand. Oh, most at the bottom people, of the link. Most people should have received their invitation. Sometimes you have to Thank minimize you. your front screen. Minimize. Hmm. I have not received my invitation yet. Nor have we. Yeah, I don't think I have either. There it is. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I thought they were all sent. They weren't. Is there going to be anybody else left over here? <laughs> it feels like the rapture. <laughs> I have a question for Julie. Julie, this is knowing me if you can hear me. I wanted to ask you if we can join Slack or we need a special invitation for that. You can join Slack. Once I um, finish, I'll, let me post it. Do you need to hang up? Should, Should I join? Joni, can I see your face, yeah. Joni? It says join. It says join. Oh, if you want to keep talking, yeah. You want to keep talking to people? I think I want to end. Later. Thank you. I'm getting everybody. Uh, Reverend Anastasia wants to go over to the new members. I don't know what's going on. You all are those who have been left. And uh, feel free to introduce yourselves and uh, say hi. Uh, and um, anything else interesting that maybe a, a factoid that perhaps people don't you don't share very often but you'd be willing to share mm. how about you carol <clears throat> hi hi john morning am i supposed to hit that join four um i don't know melanie would have to help tell me are people being sent to breakout rooms? Is that what's happening? Yes. I was trying to get to the new member breakout group, but I think, I don't know what happened here. Ken and oh. Caroline. Mel Melanie, continue there. Or Julie, one of them. Joan, are you going to let me see your face? <laughs> She's probably doing like that now. Caroline, did you see your invitation? I didn't. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. It says, it said it's been sent. Okay. So maybe I've you have to minimize your front window. I'm sorry. Yeah. I am minimized now. So, um, let me, huh. let me try. Sorry about that. 
sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I'm going to try to move you out and then move you back in. Let's try that. Naomi, where are you going to go? <laughs> I'm going to get off in a moment. I was just figuring out how to do Slack. And I realized I have, I tried and it says I am not able to. So I was asking if Julie could um, tell me if it's because I need a special invitation or anything like that. Thank you. Hey, send me to the new members. Caroline, what are you going to do? I was, I'm waiting for. Naomi, I'll email you. Is that all right? right? Okay, thanks for waiting. Thank you. Okay. Nice seeing everyone. Bye. Good to Have see a you. Great day. Bye. Hey, Julie. Yes. Um, hi, it's Vicki. So I, I got into the new member meeting and then all of a sudden got switched over to a different meeting that I don't know what it was. So they told me I should leave that breakout room. Can you get me back to the new member? Yep, Vicki. Send me there. Send me there too. I want to check in with them. John. Oh, breakout one. All right. Thank you. Bye. And Caroline, you still haven't yet received yours. John, I'm, hold on. <laughs> okay. You're moving a lot of people. Yeah. No kidding. Do you guys hang on or do you hang up? Okay. I'll try that. Reverend John, I think I've invited you as well. I should look in. Uh... What you could do, Caroline and John, is like hang up and come back in. But both of you have, it says, I'm not okay. going to say. Okay. I'll hang Wait, up and come back in. Rock. Thanks. Thank you. Goodbye. See you later. Hey, do you guys hang up? You guys stay here? Yes, we'll be here. Hi, Margaret. Hi, I'm. Welcome to UUCA. Hi. <laughs> Did you see your invitation there or? It says join breakout room. Am I supposed to hit that? Yes. And I was the sure member. because you're here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not supposed to go to that. <laughs> Thank you.